the economics of sports. Most of the time we watch sports, we enjoy playing it, being it basketball, soccer, foot or football, being it tennis, but what's the economics of sports? So we be, we'll be discussing the economics when it comes to sports. How does sport create jobs? How do we create revenues uh, from sports? How uh, sports can be used to generate revenue for the country? When it comes to manufacturing these sport equipment, what goes into that? Your jersey, your football boots and all that. Could we be making money from it? So, but before we delve into our topic for today, and again, uh, Alex Jones is a financial consultant. He's right here. Mr. Depu Zuo will be joining us shortly, as well as Mr. Uh, Dr. Dr. George Gumpu, he'll be joining. But before they join, we want to start with some water cooler moments. Tomorrow, there's going to be a business and uh, it's called the Economic and Investment Forum that's going to take place tomorrow in Washington, D.C. Not Washington, in New York. And let's see if I can show that. Okay, you have the Labra Business and Investment Forum 2019. Global Strategies for Good LLC. That takes place Thursday, September 26, 2019 from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. New York time. So uh, recently, uh, the economic dialogue concluded in Monrovia. Now we have the Liberal Business and Investment Forum 2019. Mr. Jones, what do you know about this, uh, this forum that is taking place tomorrow? I spoke to the deputy Finance Minister, and these are going to be part of the forum tomorrow, Mr. Uh, uh, Flomo, Augustine F. Flomo. So what do you know about the uh, business and investment forum that is taking place tomorrow in New York? Uh, well, Dennis, honestly, I know very little about it. Um, I do know that um, in the past, that there have been similar programs during the United Nations General Assembly meetings. Um, uh, each year held uh, at the United Nations. So I guess it's one of those uh, moments where you have a lot of dignitaries from Nigeria. And I did see the invitation um, that was forwarded to me, but I hopefully the minister can come and the deputy minister you can elaborate more on it. Your, your audio is not too clear. Okay, is it much better? I guess let me try it. They much better. Can you hear me better? Okay. Let, let's see if you can say that again. Let's see what I, that's that's better. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, I know very little about it, uh, um, but I do know there's an annual meeting, United Nations meeting, held every year, and I guess as a consequence of that meeting, most of the delegation, Nigerian delegation, uh, host other events, and I think this is what um, was one of those events. Uh, hopefully, the deputy minister will be on some point um, to elaborate more about it. All right. Yeah, that's a, that forum is going on tomorrow, and I think it's a two hundred dollars to uh, to register. Also, yeah. the news coming from Liberia talk about the printing of new banknotes. The printing of new banknotes. All right. Now we have uh, Mr. Depu Zuo. Mr. Zhu is working his way through the uh, system and will be joining him shortly. But uh, before we begin our program for today, we are having some water cooler moments. So let's talk about the, um, the printing of the new banknotes. That's, uh, that has been uh, some request from the executive to the legislature to print new banknotes. So let's talk about that. First of all, why do we need, in general, at what point do we print banknotes? What necessitated the printing of banknotes? And how is the uh, president request for the printing of new banknotes is in line with where the country is today? Alex? We, yeah, uh, well, I mean, different reasons why you print notes. One is uh, you have dilapidated bills. So in, in the circulation of money, as the money wears off, um, there, it's, a, it's a very uh, common practice to replace them. So if you take a, a old bill to the bank, the bank has to replace that with a more current bill. That's one reason. Two, 
uh, counterfeit. Uh, as time goes on, um, criminals are more sophisticated in terms of uh, producing counterfeits. So one of our purpose of printing new money is to put features in it, technology in it, that would deter or suppress uh, counterfeiting. Um, on rare occasion, uh, a government will print notes in terms of to boost economic costs or to use as a stimulus. Uh, as you saw in 2008, uh, the United States government were going through a recession and the banks were failing. And the only way to resuscitate the bank at that time uh, because of the bad mortgages, the CDOs. Mr. Jones, CDOs. Yes. Your, your, your audio is still not clear. So adjust that. Let me go to Mr. Depu Zuo. Mr. Zuo, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you. Good evening to viewers and listeners out there. How are you doing? Great. And uh, Mr. Zuo is our new addition to the uh, Business and Economic Forum. We have this every Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. Mr. Zuo, we started talking about the, uh, the investment forum that is supposed to go on in New York tomorrow and also the printing of new banknotes. Those are our things that I want you to comment on even before we start our topic for the day. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I think if we have an in investment forum in New York, uh, I think that would be a very good news for Liberia. Uh, usually at the General Assembly is where people, is like a center of attraction and the country do exhibition of production and sometimes they, they showcase what opportunity that they have and also do networking. So if we do have a, a forum scheduled for tomorrow, that will be a very welcoming news and very good for Liberia. It's positive news as far as I'm concerned. It's just that we need to prioritize or do our priority ranking in most of our discussion at this time because Liberia has enormous challenges. So you cannot tackle all of it. So you need to look at specific area. Even if you are doing investment forum, you should be looking at what do you showcase? What are some of the lower hanging fruit that the government can tackle or investor can look at and they will know that, okay, if I invest in this in Liberia in the short term, I'll be able to get this back. And the issue of investor confidence, you have to also build it, which also tied to the issue of the, the currency uh, debate that is ongoing now in Liberia. One of the things that people will be listening to there is to see how is the economy performing and what are some of the opportunities in there. So it's good. I believe uh, those who organize it should be very much strategic in their thinking and I, I have a confidence that the NRC team will be able to deliver tomorrow. Okay. Let me go back to you, Alex, to hopefully, continue your hopefully, talk. Hopefully it's working now, right? Right, that, that, that's better. That's better, okay, what's the question? Right, the question is uh, the printing of the new banknotes, what are some of the reason a country will bring new bank notes that's what you were uh, talking about when uh... so, good all right so one to replace the old money meaning as people use currency uh, it, it gets old and dilapidated and people the banks need to replenish those old notes with new ones this does not add any additional currency into the market all it does is it, it replaces the existing currency so that's one this is an ongoing process. Uh, you don't need legislation to do that. It's a maintenance process. The second reason why uh, you may print new bank notes is to, uh, to, uh, uh, to implement features against uh, counterfeits. So the advanced criminals and with the technology, people can print money using the machines, sophisticated machines and even Xerox machines. So whenever that happens, every few years, uh, the new technology features that is uh, incorporated into the uh, notes that to deter that. The third reason why you print money, now this is for economic reasons where uh, you have a crisis, you have a major economic crisis and the all port of the country, uh, unfortunately, cannot sustain uh, development or the GDP. So you add additional money, M1, which is you know, currency, in order to solve that problem. That's a temporary thing you do. So like for instance, in 1929, during the Great Depression, 
you do something like that. You increase the money supply. Uh, in, in 2008, during the financial crisis in America, you will, you know, pass legislation to create money so that you can purchase asset or purchase uh, or infuse into the capital. Uh, so the central bank will be able to money for that purpose because there's just no revenue. Uh, so those are the three reasons, uh, no reason, there are a few others, but those are the main reasons why you create money uh, to replenish, replenish the existing currency, change them, uh, to add a security feature, or to stimulate the economy. Good. Mr. Zuo, now the, uh, the executive have asked the legislature for the printing of new money. Good idea, bad idea, in between? How you look at that? Mr. Zhu, are you hearing me? Mr. Zhu, can you hear me? Okay, I'm hearing you. Some, there was some distraction, so I switch off. How, how, what is the question again, please? So, uh, we are commenting on the, uh, the printing of the new banknotes in Liberia. Oh, okay, thank you. I think uh, I listened to Alex. Uh, he gave three good reasons why. And uh, for me, maybe some of the questions might be, are we printing because uh, there have been some uh, constraint or we are trying to see to get rid of it to finance government? operation and if so what are some of the main reasons why we make the decisions and the decisions there are clear uh, with the current situation we find ourselves if you're up for the scenery ministry of finance will be making the decision on that but the cost of printing a new money versus the return we got in the in 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 the process I would suggest that it would be very much fit, uh, wise enough for them to do some study on this and see, first of all, why uh, we are having challenges in terms of confidence in our own currency to be in the, in the circulation and more of our currencies outside the, the banking system. Now, going back to print, we don't know the quantity that is outside and the quantity that is currently in the banking system with the current investigation that has been going on. So to, to reprint or to print new currency, uh, in my mind, I think it will also bring confidence crisis because uh, people are not even still having confidence in the banking system. Yeah. That's one of the yeah. reasons why you see money is outside the system. So the, the central bank will be in the best position to say, this is the study we've done, and this is the best solution we've come up with. Like that, it will inform the government uh, decision. If it is only intended for us to see how best to finance government operation, then the question there will be, what's the relationship between the central bank and the Ministry of Finance? And the IMF has already advised that uh, the lending to government from the central bank have been one of the major constraints to our, our financial crisis. So why go that way? Is it, is, is, are there other options that we can adapt? To first of all, get the money back into the banking system. What are some of the opportunities that are there? So until we can have some uh, facts from the central bank, I will cautiously advise government against to printing new money for me. Thank you. Now, for our today's discussion, we want to discuss the economics of sports. So Alex, I want you to first just go ahead and give us a breakdown. When you say the economics of sports in Liberia, what is it that we're talking about that my listeners, the first thing that jump out of them will be, what is this? Well, um, most times when people uh, talk about sports, it's more of an emotional more of something, it's a passion. And if Alex, I, your, your audio is not, it's still not. Sir, can you hear me better? Yeah. Okay. So most of the times people think it's a passionate thing where you play sports, you play a match and that's it. You go home and you're part of your team. In the modern world, sports is all about economics. It's the purpose of playing sports in America, whether it's American football, baseball, basketball, or European soccer, is about making money. 
So this is something that probably nobody heard before. It's a multi-billion dollar industry, okay? For everything from TV networks to manufacturing of uh, uh, sport, sporting goods. I think you heard about Dick's sporting goods. You hear about Adidas, Nike. Those are all what makes up the economics of sports, not just the game itself, but the merchandise, the apparels, the commercial, or even the education. Now you have sports management, sports medicine. So I think this is a very unique topic because it's one of those things where people are misinformed in Africa. And it's part of the poverty mentality where we don't look uh, uh, at things critically. Why are we doing it? Uh, why are we playing sports? Why are we investing hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars into Lone Star soccer team when Lone Star hasn't produced much job or any job for the people? Uh, they haven't generated any 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 returns for those uh, monies that were invested into it. So this is a very very I, I would say touching topic, uh, but it's a lot of misinformation and uh, ignorance. When you talk about sports in America, you talk about making money in the economy. Mr. Zuo, yes, you, you, thank were, you. you were in Labrura. Are we making money from sports? And, and what is it is what how my, my first question is how open is the discussion about sport economics in Liberia? Is, is this something that we that we talk about as uh, policy makers, as soccer players, as sports authority? Is this something that comes to the table for discussion? Yes, I think uh, one of the things that I see in Liberia observed is that the sometimes you need to look at the social and financial performance in terms of sports. When it comes to sports economics. And for Liberia right now, what have been the focus of the government and in fact the citizens have been the social side of things in terms of cohesion, uh, peace and reconciliation. And that's what most people look at when it comes to sports on the national level. In the meantime, there, there, there are more enthusiasm among the young people when it comes to the European soccer which uh, indirectly has impact on people because it, it actually kind of attract them to sports and they admire it. But in terms of economic side of it, they haven't had any interest in it to see. If uh, European League is ongoing right now and many people you know, going to club, to video club to watch the game, what do I get from the watching the game? What are some of the talent or skills that I'm getting from there? Are people going to to watch the European League to actually get some skill from there that they can they can improve themselves, or are there other marketing opportunities like uh, Ellis said that you can look at while European League is going on? So that these are things that we haven't really uh, uh, considered as part of our priority now for, for for Liberia. But one thing I know is that uh, the LFA has done a lot of innovation or creativity when Musa. Uh, Really to keep talk over and the current team also doing well in the sense that they collaborated with the private sector that mean the, the uh, cell phone company uh, orange which, uh, cell phone which is now orange and long star and the rest of them to see how best they can uh, do sports promotion and uh, promote soccer but they are not considering all of the sports uh, specifically they are considering only soccer but i think that there are major potential for that in liberia and it's one thing I can tell people that we should be in the position to think more of making money out of sports because talent pays more money now than any professional career that many people pursue. If you see even here in the United States, you see that the NFL players making millions of data, while NBA players are also making millions of data. But someone can just get a, a PhD and the guy is still going to put in some time to do more research in, research before he was getting 500000 so yeah. how do we tap into that? How do we make it a priority to make it more enterprising? And it's one thing that I see. But realistically, there are many people who are doing that. You have so many uh, soccer team coming up uh, from, from individuals who are sponsoring their team. And you have county team now in the country. There are so many teams that are coming up. Unlike what we were doing before, first division, second division, was only Barrow and IE. You have several teams now that are coming up. Yeah. A, a friend of mine would say, well, uh, see, sport people make so much money. 
and you see your professor and this person, a doctor, don't make that much, or a police officer. So my friend said, until you be teaching and people pay to watch you, you're going to make less than the sports people. <laughs> you see your, your stock broker, like uh, Alex, he's, he's, he's trading on Wall Street, and then you got people, go, Alex, go. So as long as you don't have that, you, you, you don't generate that much money that sport generates. But in, in Liberia, it, it seems that our thinking is still not, is still far from that, which people will also think that it's all economics. So it comes to the point whether it's out of the chicken or the egg. Is it because our economic, uh, we don't, our economic is not strong? Is that why sport is not generating money? Or is it because we're not even thinking that far? We're only thinking, as uh, Mr. Zuo said, the social aspect. Uh, what up? Oh, is it Ellis going? You, no, you can go oh, keep ahead. going. Keep going. I okay. think you're doing good. <laughs> yes. One thing. One thing I know is that uh, when people have, you know, the entrepreneurial skill to take risks to know, okay, let me venture into this, it will definitely become a market. I think many people are doing that. They have people who got their private uh, soccer field now in Liberia. And from there, they have their team. And, you know, and these people are trying to sponsor the team. But the only thing that there is that they have not looked, they are not looking at it from the issue of uh, uh, production in the sense that if I happen to invest in this, in this soccer player, how much investment we are making one player and how can I really get my money back? That's the business side of it. Because realistically, and it's one opportunity that like we have right now, even though we, we miss out a little bit of it and I said it before to most, most of my colleagues, we have the world best player uh, president we are currently, he's now president. The fact that there is that if you do a business statistics, you clearly see that that's a good sample that you have Diba, you have Weir that came from Liberia and went worldwide. Meaning that if you do a business analysis to see what are the potential, what are the chances of getting the replacement of Weir that will be more talented and skillful than we are, you can still come up with that and sell the market to, to business people and say the European League, I can now project myself as an investor. I will put $10,000 into my, my, my sports activity or investing $100,000 into this to, to come up with no more players and market them. And you can still use our former world best and, and, and soccer stars that are in the place and they can market the players. But I haven't seen that actually. And many of the things that, as, as I said, is more of a social performance and cohesion and other these things. But it's good for us to, to, to discuss that. Soccer field should not be you know, something that people just go there for fun is also for entertainment. And once you do entertainment, it has a way of also reducing stress. And as long as you have an entertainment that impacts your body, you need to pay for it. So we need to also give the consciousness to the citizen that there's nothing free, there's no free lunch. Here, as much as we are having practice on SKD sport complex, who are the players that are practicing? Soccer stars are practicing. For you to actually see them playing, you have to pay because it's a big practice round. So we need to attach cost to it. That's one side of it that we are not doing. And as long as we are making everything free, we don't expect any growth opportunity in that area. But, but you see, there have been a lot of, Alex, I wanted you to, uh, I would come to you to list just ways in which we can make money from sports in Liberia. But to your point, uh, Mr. Zuo, is people actually pay money to go to, to, go to this stadium. Right when there's soccer going on at the SKD, for instance, when I was there, people start going as early as 6 a.m. You know, and why they are there, there are a lot of entertainment. People sell merchandise and and, and do all of that. Even here in the United States, when uh, in the early 2000s and prior, when there was an IE and Barrow game, one place people travel from all over the states, and a use a lot of money used to be made out of that. But is it an issue of corruption or is it that people really not thinking about making money from sports? I think people, people, uh, the issue for government lead, I think for that is obviously like more of a corruption aspect of it. Accountability is still a problem uh, uh, across the country and I see that. 
But what I usually tell people is that if people can pay to go watch European League in the video club, and every time when they talk about serious league, you see people all in the video club, you don't think they will have interest in watching the serious thing game that you organize and every quarter you organize a league, every quarter and the competition is there. People know that they get excited to watch the competition. They will pay for it. That's the aspect we need to actually invest in. And that's, that investment will definitely have to come from the private sector end. I'm always saying it because one of the problems we are faced with in Liberia is that we put everything into government hands. Why? I know of a young brother who came from the United States three years ago, and he has a big dream to, to put a soccer park. And he bought 10 acres of land, and his, his dream is to have a soccer park, meaning he had about 10 football fields. People come there and practice and play there. Several teams will be there at the same time, and they kept there. That's the kind of vision we're looking for. Like that, that's a better investment. Maybe you got a sports bar, people will come there for entertainment at the same time. Players come in, they will camp to the same place, and they, they won't have to go out of, out of the, the camp. And it becomes a business. When people start thinking like that, then that sports actually you enjoy the economic side of sports right away. Until we can do that, it will be difficult. People still think that game entry in Monrovia should be free, so look at our county meet are very attractive. I was going to talk about county meet, and they say, oh, it's a free entry now. The president declared it get free. The Ministry of Youth and Sports officials are now thinking, well, okay, they printed a ticket. What happened to the ticket that are printed? What are the costs of the ticket printed? Now it becomes free. Now it becomes a cost of government. But if we are saying, okay, citizens from each county that are playing today will be paying 100 Liberian dollars to enter, if you carry as low as 100 Liberian dollar, and you would definitely have over 40, 50 thousand dollar in your coffer instead of saying we're making it free. So we have to attach cost to it so that government will understand that. I think when it comes to the management of the sports, especially with the county meet, it will be better for them to outsource it to private firm, like what they were doing with cell phone printing aid. When the private firm print the ticket and they sell it, so government should have no interfering with it. As long as the private firm run the, the entry and the, and, the, and the management of the sports, you will see there will be income generation, and that thing can be a very good opportunity for other young talents that are there. They can pay them and also sell them abroad. Alex, yes, we, are we are talking about sports in Liberia, and, you, and we, you are showing us white people instead of our league. Well, maybe that's what we need to look at, because... Everybody wants uh, Liberia to grow. They want a good econ economy. They want to look at other countries and say, oh, why can't we be like France? Why can't we be like, you know, uh, 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 China? But that's what China is doing. Most of China or Italy or Spain or UK, look at the economy. Uh, they're not farming. They have a service, service and manufacturing or economy. And those economies, what, what are those? When you break them down, okay? You have the service industry, you have your hotels, you have your airlines, you, uh, uh, you have your, your sports teams, you have things like drinks, Gatorade, all these different things. So in Liberia, somehow, and again, I will go back to our educated people where they come and see all these things here. You look at the NFL, for instance. Yeah, you think most of the money that is made in every city, New York, the New York Giants, for example, all right, or the, or, or, or the uh, Golden State Warrior. Those are billion dollar teams. Those teams cost as much as the whole library economy, one basketball team. So if we just have one, or let's say Chelsea, cost the whole library economy. So if we're just successful in creating one team, or like the race, Formula One, that I was just showing a while ago. If you just have some one of those uh, uh, situations, you can, you, you, you can basically quadruple your economy. So that's why uh, I'm showing white people sports. We are showing uh, tennis. The US Open alone every year in New York City generate billions of dollars. You have sponsors like Mercedes-Benz or the hotels from Waldorf, Historia. For that week or two weeks they're in town, they generate billions of dollars. So 
those are things where you expect our our economists and our uh, central banks and the uh, finance ministry of finance and our analysts to be sitting around the table and say, all right, we can compete in other areas. We can compete in technology. Okay. What can we compete in? Like uh, 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 Mr. Zuor just said, he said we have a former world best player that is well recognized as one of the best players who ever played a game of uh, soccer. That's an opportunity. Can we now host a major or uh, annual uh, sports match, soccer match that will generate a lot of money? Can we not start making a uh, soccer jersey in Liberia? Can we not start making socks for a sports team? So we don't need to start making cars or airplanes, but those are things that we can do tomorrow. And those are things that I, I disagree where it has to be through the private industry alone. The capital has to come from the central bank, from the central government. They have to have the vision to say, this is an industry or this is a sector that we need to, uh, that we need to participate in. And, and that will grow the economy. And guess what happened? When people come to Liberia, they have to rent hotels. They have to take uh, the keke. They have to go out to eat. Restaurants will make money. Uh, so again, you want to grow an economy, we have to start thinking like 1970 and 1980 financial economists and start thinking in the 21st century, which is find those things that people like. People like sports in Liberia. But how can you use it now to uh, create jobs or to create industries? Right. That's what the government needs to focus on. So give us examples because uh, we're here to perfect solutions as well. Give us an example in areas in which the sport can actually generate money, make money. Give us okay. some examples. So uh, so before we go to the manufacturing, let's look at the current Liberian uh, what, every annual uh, county meet. Okay, county meet. So let's say you have the 15 counties and each of them have a team. If you took all those teams and you say, all right, going forward, what we're going to do, we're going to allow people now, we're going to, let's say, get investors within those counties and Liberians to put money in each of those teams, meaning wherever money you put into those teams, as the team make money, you will make some kind of return. Okay? That's what is done with your, if, if you own shares in, in, in the uh, Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers or you own share in Chelsea or uh, 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 Barcelona that we're so crazy about. So let's do it with the county meet. Tomorrow, the Ministry of Youth and Sport comes and says, okay, for now on, all the counties going to have a team. That team is going to be owned by shareholders, Liberians. And we're going to play games all through the year or maybe six months of the year. And the ownership of those things will belong to the county and the people who own those things. So right there, you generate it. So every time a, 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 a game is held, it's not only held in Morovia anymore. It's held in Bikana, it's held in Yekepa, wherever your team is. And so instead of wearing Barcelona jersey and sitting there watching TV at a video club, Barcelona in France and Chelsea, that these people making money, and you sitting there like, bro, you broke, you don't have any money, right? You don't have a job. Now you have the opportunity to invest in your own team. These teams can go out and, and, and get any players from around the country or even around Africa. So that's what I would do if I was running a sport uh, program or a sport, uh, 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 you know, I was ministering the sport. I would first get the teams. Right. I would structure a way where the teams can become team I, uh owned by individuals. And that will, then, then the money they make, they can be stillions. Teams and I can say, okay, we need to uh, not just have a football team, but we need to have a basketball team. We need to have a golf team. We need to have a tennis team. And then whenever any of those players now are so good where a European team wants them, they will pay that team for that player. Right. That's something that can happen in Liberia tomorrow. It's important you said that because I was in Liberia watching County meet I don't know, and uh, Mr. Zuo, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that any county team existed right after the county meet. So they put these teams together only for the county meet. After that, you don't hear about them until the next county meet. And so 
Yes, that the way I want to come in from Ellie's analysis is very right. Uh, the counter meet is, is, is a very good opportunity for us to develop our sports and also make money. Government has actually invested in it. Uh, if you talk about government support, government been giving money for the counter meet, but the management of the fund is where the problem is. But they, 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 there's a need for us to look at it from a supply and demand side. Why is true that the uh, uh, government will be giving the money? Uh, what what are the demand for sporting activity in the county besides the county meet session? Is it possible that the county's leadership or administration can put in, in place a mechanism annually? It can do their recruitment system in a way that they recruit people from the district, which will which will require district lead, and they raise money from the district lead, and that accumulation of the money from the district lead can be deposited, so they can finance the county meet for themselves without government putting money in. These are some of the, the marketing strategy and the economic side of sports that need to be put in place. Because they feel that thirty thousand dollar will come from government to each county team, they, they they do no investment from the county at the county level. And interestingly, I will tell you this: that the, the good thing about it for me in Nimba, we usually raise money, and the county meet will always be the time for the people to raise money. In the end, you will never see any report of the money being raised and collected. Then at, at, at the end of the day, when the team reached to Morovia and one individual, sorry to say, but uh, Jungle Water will be the one to finance it. It's a pre-financing activity. We, we need to go beyond that point. And uh, I told my, my colleague the last time that you can be soccer star and you retire, you come home and you're not, you're not becoming creative. One of the easier way you could do it is just until we, we have a content, meet, can you look at the street soccer as a measure of investment for yourself? Mm -hmm. If you take a street soccer and say every evening you block uh, Buchanan Street and other area where the Zogos already doing their practice, can you have it as a pickup point and as three, four locations where you pick good players? And in the end, you have your own team that you can you can you can register it and make it as an investment. And then you say, oh, where is, where's the money coming from? It's all about the, the creativity, the, the idea to actually see how best you see it move on the market side, on the economic side of it, and see how you can do it. Look at what, what he's talking, uh, Ellis is talking about. Can we look at, you know, sporting material? I, I, I'm saying this with real uh, passion that Liberia has, up to now, we still have a big, great potential. We, you, recently, President we are, went to UAE and for him to just put, affix a signature on the jersey for his counterpart. And people politicized it. And when I, when, I, when, I, when I read the news and I also listened to the news and read it, I said, why are we really behaving very lazy? This man has been called to affix a signature on the jersey in another country. Is it not possible that a team can be set up here that they find that he just stand by the team and say, library team, soccer team for X, Y, Z. And he's in the position of patient out and being a big market for Liberia. So maybe one of the things that we have to do, this kind of conversation will help us to see, to be thinking more, you know, creatively about how do we do our sporting activity. People, People having soccer field, do they leave it open? If we happen to fence a soccer field, it means that we invested money in it, right? So that field been an investment for government. And right now in the region where they have a, the, the county meet elimination round, they have all the soccer field are all fence. Why are we not raising money even after the county meet? It should be something that we make sure that we prioritize it as part of our investment. Yeah. Even though Ellis disagree when I talk about private sector engagement, <laughs> what is extra career is extra thing by itself. You don't expect someone who just thinking about how to become a superintendent, how to become a representative, talk about sports management. For them, 
It is all about your popularity to win vote. But an investor or an entrepreneur, his concern will be, oh, Drop how strong my team will be and how many persons that will come on the field if I take one of the best players to play in this league. So you have a task with the private company and to see how best to promote that player and say, player A, who is now the, the best player from the country B, will be promoting what? Cellcom. The moment people hear about him, they will come on the field, whether he's from Lofa or he's from Grand Gide, Whenever the team ready to play, people will rush there. So these are the investment and creative means of us doing the sports in order to make money. But let me go to, to the other side. There, there's something peculiar about Liberia. I think the reason why people are not paying entry fee or not paying for sports in our place is simply because we have decided to make it free. But as long as you attach cost to it, people will value it and will pay for it. I've seen that in many occasions. They will definitely come and watch the game. And, and I just want to pick it back off your point you made, that pain. But when I look at sports in general, I'm not just looking at how much people pay the 20 or $30 to, to, to go and watch a game. I think the sports economy is much more bigger. If you can see on the screen here, the companies that run sports apparel are some of the largest in the world. Look at Nike, United States, $15 billion in asset. That's almost what? More than three, almost three times that the entire New Balance, United States, Italy, Kappa, Jaco, Germany. Look at how many German companies. All in excess of five, this one, six, uh, uh, 63.8 million, okay, euros. Adidas, Puma. So what, do we have one Liberian sports company that can even make t-shirt? Why, why Lone Star has to buy jersey from Germany? You won't tell me there is no tailors in Liberia that can make a jersey, okay, that Lone Star could wear? that people can get jobs. So the industry of sports is more than the game itself. These companies don't do the World Cup because it's something that is so much like. And I, I, I can tell you, I, I've, I've uh, said it and researched this area. Companies fight to host the World Cup because of the economics behind it, whether it's Brazil, China, South, South America, I mean, uh, uh, South, South Korea, or Russia, because it generates billions of dollars in terms of revenue. They can sell their products, they can market. So what I'm looking at, and again, uh, Jenna's next question will probably be, you know, how and, and what's going on, why we can't do this thing. And the reason is simple. We have bad management, bad managers in Liberia. I would be remiss if I don't say that, I, I can't think of one Liberian manager, okay, one person in Liberia, at least at the government level, and this is a challenge that I would say is capable of managing a major corporation. Not one person who can say that I built a corporation, I can manage it, I can get, do financials, I can grow it, I can do mergers and acquisitions. So even if you have the counter leagues, even if you have the sports team and you put a billion dollars, who's going to manage it? Who has the experience to say, all right, I can build up a, a soccer manufacturer. We can start making football in Liberia. Which the technology is available to every country. We can start making socks. So uh, we have a problem. And the problem is what we're trying to solve here because you don't have people who are even willing to come to a show to discuss economics. Okay? You, you don't even have people who can come on and say, all right, I'm an economist or I'm a financial analyst. I'm a Liberian. Let's talk about this. Let's, you know, convince me why we don't have a socks company in Liberia or a t-shirt company. You, can, you can't find it. First of all, they would not be available. So you, if, you can, if you can produce socks in your own country, how are you going to manage Chelsea? So if somebody can manage Chelsea, they're not going to be in Liberia because Chelsea is going to pay them $10 million a year all right, so we need to create managers. And we talked about this last week. Our universities and to be more geared towards practical education. 
getting people to learn how to start a business. This is a business plan. This is a business case that MBA students should be looking at, saying, all right, what industry, how can we produce uh, uh, resources or how can we create a whole industry in Liberia just centered around sports? The Ministry of Youth and Sports should put our challenge or anybody who can come up with an idea on how we can raise revenue and employ 5,000 Liberians, right? The ministry will give a grant of a million dollars. The economic team behind the president, instead of going to some stupid two or three day session where all they're going to do is take pictures and go back and it's going to be business as usual. And again, this is my own comment. This is not a comment I reflect on anybody else. I say it's stupid because it's not going to achieve anything. They can put out a grant and say somebody who can come up with an idea to, generate, to create jobs in an industry that people already like. We will give this amount of grant or we give this amount of interest loan. Then you move in somewhere because in the process, then you're developing people. Now people start thinking. But Liberian intellectuals, they don't want to think. They don't want to, they don't, like I said, this topic, the most easiest topic. I'm not into sports. I never, I never play soccer. I don't have any, but I can manage a soccer team because management is management. I can read a balance sheet. I can read, I can understand what the demands are, what the supply and what the economics of it is. I don't need to be a soccer player to manage it. You have, again, uh, I will recap by saying, you mm -hmm. have an opportunity. You have the best, one of the best, uh, most popular soccer player as president. If George Real tomorrow came out and said, I'm having a goodwill tournament in Liberia, and I'm not going to have it in Morovia. I'm going to have it in different counties. You can raise up to $10 million. And you can carry resources now to, the, to, the, to, the, to those counties because people will have to go to the watch the game. Whether you come from Europe or America, hotels will have to make money. Businesses can start. I'm only interested in how we can employ people in Liberia, how we can build wealth in Liberia. And most of our people who are in government or so forth or who are educated, they're not interested in those things. The only thing they want is they want to win elections. They want to be senator. They want to be representative. Why the House of Representatives don't have a bill on the floor today that says, all right, we, our best opportunity in Liberia with a president that is you know, well-known for soccer is to invest in this industry. Why no senator has come up with that idea? Why Dennis had to come up with that idea? <laughs> you know, so the problem is the people. We have we have a bunch of mumus calling themselves educated people, calling themselves economists and calling themselves analysts, when really all they're looking for is a government job to pay them and not to be innovative. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. you. You cover a lot of grounds. Let's see, you know, you, one of those things that you mentioned is um, priorities, okay? Right now in, in Liberia, the priority is not, or maybe the priority is to create wealth, but we are using different means, and that is political office. You know, by the time you become a senator and you make, what, 15,000 plus, plus 29,000, <laughs> plus 15,000 USD, plus 29,000 LD, and then you manage the country development funds. So part of it is it is it a, a structural issue? Like uh, Mr. Zua, you were talking about the uh, the various county managing their own sport, but we don't have a decentralized system. To what extent is our political system affecting this kind of entrepreneurial spirit, wealth creation, and then people in various counties being able to say, okay, we can do this to uh, to create jobs in our own county. Everything is driven by the central government. That's where the focus has been. Yes, thank you. Uh, the country, actually, for me, when it comes to sports and the whole country meet, it's a very good opportunity for development of sports because realistically, you can see the competition. If we happen to, to give encouragement to individual, our challenge in Liberia is about accountability and management or leadership skill. People will come and they will not account for whatever a bond has given them from sports activity. So it becomes discouraging and most of the people from the countries who want to actually invest into sports will not be able to put their money there. Equally so, I see it more as an opportunity. What is good here for us to do, like uh, Ellie said, we need to 
think more creatively. If people bank, commercial banks in Liberia happen to see that from the cash flow of so-called counting meat, there are a lot of fundraisers and they account for it, they see the balance sheet. They would definitely have confidence in the system and say, look, I can put $10 there to see whether, even if the money is raised, I can be the custodian of the money, deposit the money with me. It's not like that. But people don't give account of what has happened. So it's difficult for you to see in the video technique as a business. That's one, one reality here. It's not possible that the county will invest money in a game after the county meet and do hear anything. And sometimes one of the things that there is that we don't think more of a business approach to it. The expenditure during the county meet is far higher than what? The planning process. So people don't play. If you're saying you want to have a player, you should be in the position to look at the cost aspect of it and say, I'm going to go ahead and plan to develop what? 15 players. And if 15 players will cost me $10,000 a month, like burn dollar a month for players and 12 months, and you cost it and run it. But every game, how do you get a proceed from every game? So every game, you'll be wasting money now to what? Finance the, what? the next game. If you, if you, if you, if initially, you're going to be the loser. But what is going to come at, at last is that you're going to recover as you go along. When your team becomes stronger and become active team, you're going to get your money back. So individuals need to invest into that. Okay. And it's not only, it shouldn't be only about soccer. You know, even people go to Olympic, you know, track and field. People run, young people have, you got so many talented people. How do they go abroad? to participate, to compete internationally. These are things that we now need to look at. If they are given opportunity to say, how do you attract people into just tennis? How many tennis players do you have? If you're going to bring the competition, who will sponsor a tennis player or golf player? Can a private company come up with a, of a team and let a private company come and say, we want to buy a share? You establish a team and all of them buy share and say, look, we are investing $10,000 each into our golf team for Liberia. And two teams, just instead of two teams, and five companies come and we are investing to that and say, I have 5% share and all of them own share in the business and you give it to somebody to manage it. That's how you make the business. And right. that's what we need to be doing. Because okay. beyond that point, you cannot depend on, on your private pocket or government pocket to run it. In the end, you're not going to get much in it. If you are just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are discussing the economics of sports. My guest, Mr. Alex Chuchu Jones, a financial analyst, Mr. Depu Zuo, uh, an economist, also uh, a lecturer at the University of Liberia, and, and uh, who has worked and consulted with the Ministry of Finance in the pro pro government. Well, and just joining us, we have Mr. Edward uh, Amarat, and he's the uh our West African correspondent. Uh, welcome, Mr. Amara. Mr. Amara, Edward Amara is a new addition Freetown. to the focus on Liberia team. Mr. Amara, all the way from Freetown, Chevalon. Welcome to focus on Liberia. Thank you very much. I'm happy. I have just been following your program as well. I'm sorry because of our life system here is very poor, but I hope you are getting in faintly. You, you are, we are, we are getting you. Very, we are excited to have you join the broadcast tonight. Hi, it's Freetown. Well, Freetown is good, though we have been facing some upheaval when it comes to rain, a few flooding and other things. But on the average, I think Freetown is much better compared to August, July. Now the rain has ceased or subsided because of certain circumstances. Even though today we had a very serious accident in Bo, the second city of Sierra Leone, uh, there was a kind of a, co a collapse of house that happened. About 50 people lost their life. So, mm. so our heart yeah. goes out to the people of Sierra Leone. Yeah, second yeah. yeah. city in Sierra Leone. And it, it's kind of uncompleted building, but we learned that from what I had on BBC, I also watched the uh the the footprints on television here it is an it's, it's a kind of house that was go on a, uh, that is undertaking construction mm -hmm. so it was around two o'clock p.m here 
when certain part of the house collapsed, some passerbys were involved, and those laborers who were also in the house, some of them lost their life. But up to now, we cannot be certain over how many people actually died. Mm. But around 50 to 60 souls might have lost their life from the latest news that I collected. Our hearts so, go out to those yeah. uh, affected in the bereaved family. But we are delighted to have Mr. Amara, Edward Amara, our West African correspondent. Tonight we are discussing the economics of sports, you know, making money from sports. And uh, we in West Africa, I don't know, and Mr. Amara, you can uh, chime in, if we actually think about, you know, making money from sport or how much do we make from sport with all the different areas that, you know, we can use to generate money, being it from uh, producing sport equipments or, you know, get intake from uh, sport, getting transfer fees and all the other things. How is that across West Africa? Thank you very much. I have been clinically observing, uh, listening to what uh, Mr. Alex and his group analysts are analyzing. It's a very big move. To me, when we talk about sports in Africa, I don't just want to limit it to Liberia in Africa or in West Africa in general. Sport is synonymous to making money and sometimes tantamounts to development. But it is unfortunate that when you watch the ground of Africa for now, especially with Africa, how do you think that our government can make money out of sport when the playground is not there? Because when you talk about sports, we, we, we normally think that uh, sports should involve certain things. It's a kind of competition like. It means the uh, sports actually ginger up development into certain countries because most of the places where sports meet are being organized or so whenever a country hosts Africa or African Cup of Nations or whatsoever sports meet might be their development at the end of the day tend to come. But well, the government in, in West Africa, as in Liberia, Sierra Leone, or the surrounding West Africa countries, they are not actually investing in sports. And I think when we talk about development, it should not be something that should only be limited to one thing. They only depend on the natural resources. And most of these things that we get out of our country, they are only be sent to Europe in the form of a raw, in a raw form. Most of those things, we only take it from the crude form and send it to Europe for them to be manufactured. And all of the day, we just see just little amount of money that is being uh, sent back to Africa. So if our government want to invest into sport, I think uh, the first thing that they should do, they should create a playground. Playing a, a playground in essence, yeah, they let them in, invest into the infrastructures. Not that most people in West Africa, especially I'm, I'm a very big so Chelsea soccer fan, and I, apart from Chelsea, I watch other sport. I think the best thing that the government should do is like, invest into 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 the infrastructure that actually junior people to ban watch sport they should make the feed uh as uh, alex rightly said just try to be sorted in infrastructure like even when you come to hotels you just try because normally when sports happen into any country end of the day we expect development to 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 happen just after the sport but unfortunately these things are not happening so no matter how you see it, people may not tend to support African sport the way they support it in Europe because you may not find the comfort into where you have to go and watch your sport. That is why most of the time, even at in our national stadium, when they say there is a sport over there, whatsoever sport that they do, only few people may afford to attend because if their stadium cannot even accommodate the amount of people that are going over there. So the government should not only uh, try to focus themselves on trying to get the natural resources, but they are certain, let them just, they are, but, but most of the time, I don't believe in trying to just limit, trying to, uh, trying to limit yourself to a particular economy. Like yeah. if you want to make Liberia to be self independent, the citizens self reliance, you only depend on agriculture. No, you have all that area that they need to invest. And they should also encourage private citizens. People actually will, I know there are Liberians who have money, they want to come and invest into sport. I think, but the government should also provide that playing ground. Let there be encouragement. You are all seeing other countries, like take a common example, like South Africa, they have the Abbas Premier League. You look like Ghana, Zambia, even uh, Ivory Coast, very close to we you talk about Burkina Faso, they are doing fantastically in sport, but it is because the government is trying showing, showing keen interest into it. And a peculiar case is Liberia. George Okonwea is the president, but I'm not seeing any type of solid move into that particular area. Yeah. That's the that's the that's the irony. Th th thank thank you so much. And uh, if you're just joining us again, we are discussing the economics of sports. The voice you heard that's the voice of our. West African correspondent, Mr. Edward Amaran.
we want to bring in our, our guests, our, our viewers. If you are if you are online, you can call in 712-770-8002 and punch in the code 229545. Again, the number to call if you want to join the discussion, 712-770-8002. The code is 229545. At this time, let's go to a short commercial break. There's a school called Royal Academy International School. It's informing all parents, guardians, stakeholders, and the general public that pre-registration and registration for this academic year, this uh, it said the next academic year, it just started, is now in progress. So the Royal Academy International School has just added 12th grade, that's in uh, Liberia. If you want more information, please contact the cell numbers I posted. That's uh, Bishop Lawrence Jackson, he's a proprietor of this school. You can contact the cell phone number is right there. Also in October, we have the Association of Librarian Journalists in the Americas, Aja. They're gonna be having their annual national convention that's from October 3 to 6 in the city of Minneapolis. Uh, Councilor Tiawong Gonglo will be there as the guest speaker. Councilor Jerome Verdia, the uh, chairman of the uh, TRC or the former chairman, he's going to be there. And also Ambassador Julie Endy, she's going to be one of the speakers. And the theme, the role of the media in the sustenance of the Liberian democracy. Again, that is the uh, Association of Liberian Journalists in the America, Alja, inviting you to their convention. There's also going to be a benefit dinner. That's on Saturday, October 5. The address is posted. So if you are in the Minnesota area or anywhere in the United States, you can make your way for Aja convention. Let's come back. I was, uh, my, my brothers and I in 1989, we started a young soccer team in Bannersville called FC Juveniles. I mean, young kids, you know, teenagers, some teenagers at that time, we started the, uh, the team and by 2000, no, by from 89, by 1992, we were like thinking about, because we started this as an under 14 team. And by 2002, we were thinking about, you know, going to third division. In fact, some of the players that play in the under 14 tournament in Sweden, I think we took the tournament, most of them were our players. So I don't know to what extent these young players are still being developed in Liberia. And uh, we, were, we, were, we were young at that time, but we were actually thinking money. So we always said by this time we'll be the one eating the transfer fee. Mr. Mr. Zuo, okay. everything you do, you got to start from, you know, small. Is right. this a young circle like under, the under 14 or under nine school? Is this something that is still being encouraged? I know long back sport used to be looked at as a, you know, wayward children. But if we develop sport at that young level, I think we can go a little further in realizing what we're talking about now, making some money from football or, or any other sport. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me just extend my uh, sympathy to the people of Sierra Leone and also my heart to them, uh, Brother Amara. I know these are some of the cause of this climate change, uh, things that we need to work on to as part of our economic uh, development program as a country. It's so sad for Liberia and, and Sierra Leone, and for Sierra Leone situation have been worse this whole year. But back to the topic that we were on, I would think the, the, the development of sports starting with young kids is still going on. I think just this year, the, the female, when the team came to the United States and, and made history and many people saw it as a window of opportunity and people were all excited about it. But the one good thing that is there is that you still have a community-based team, a small team all over the community. Then you also have older people doing this thing, what we call the old timer sports association among the old people, old folks also having it. What is still missing 
you know, I'll go back to it is that they looking at it from the business perspective and see how best we can invest in. Hmm. And uh, Amara said the government need to invest in infrastructure. And it's very much good, but in private individuals also need to invest into the infrastructure as well. Build a soccer team. As I said, a young brother who came to Liberia to build a soccer park, and he still have the vision to build a soccer park. Once you have these things, people will come as a private area and it's built by a private fund, you will pay. It's almost like people are having an uh, entertainment center. You will always rent it. So you can still rent a soccer field that is, is constructed by a private firm and you they earn money and build players from there and and and, and transfer the players and still make it an investment. Yeah. And we, good thing about Liberia now, we we'll go back to the issue of our, the, the opportunity we have with President uh, we are being ahead. How Liberia can now make use of the opportunity yeah. is something that uh, I raised before, and I'm going to go back to it. How can we really build a relationship <clears throat> with the sports management team at LFA, Liberia Football Association, and that of the Ministry of Youth and Sports? One of the things that there is that we are thinking more of how much money that we can get from government of Liberia. We still have regional organizations that will still give us finances and opportunity. Uh, the current uh, representative of bombing, Erin Snow, I think his administration at LFA president, he brought FIFA. And you will see that the ATS were renovated by FIFA. <clears throat> we still have opportunity to access the regional funding, to, be, to, to bring in investment with necessarily looking at you know, public finance with limited resources to, to spread it all over. How can we take advantage of our international cooperation in terms of our relationship with international body to tap into the opportunity we have? Is it, how do we relate sports to education? Because there's, there have been scientific proving that, and proof that indeed, there's a relationship between the physical fitness and our mental fitness in terms of our academic performance. Yeah. How are we going to, to develop the young people? You we look at it from that perspective and say, look, youth and sports and ministry of education can have program that develop the young people, soccer, kickball, basketball, so that it becomes an investment for the school as well. Private individual run schools and they make money. The school can still make money from sports as well. Yeah. Every tournament, Inter high school tournament is one bigger, bigger league that used to used to be a, 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 a passport in Monrovia. It's no longer a priority. How can you develop that? Once you go to high school, they, they, you, you see you create interest in that. And people who are graduating from high school, the next thing that they're like, oh, once I play for this high school team, what are the window opportunities that if I play for my high school team, there will be a promotion for me to play for what? Second division division team. There should be system in place for promotion and incentive for players. As long as you make a business, uh, you will see the value chain. You will see the uh, in the value addition. Oh, if I come from one level from high school and I get to college, there's an opportunity for me to get scholarship. So these are things that we need to be doing as a country. And I, I believe the issue with the young people is about time now that the Ministry of Youth and Sports, along with the President himself, to come up with a new strategy and say, look, it's, it's written, even though it's a youth development, sport development, but it had to be written in strategy and say, how do we do it? So yeah. that in the end, the young people will be saying, I want to be the president. We are to be yeah. what best. Because many of the young people have interest in politics. So if the man can become a football player and become what best and still come and be president, so I can still follow the same trend. Right. If he gets to the international scene, he will get distracted from becoming president. He might end up becoming an investor. Yeah. And I think it, it's something unique that we got to look at. It. I will okay. just give you one, one I'm sorry me, for taking much of the time. Let me, let I remember me, doing it. Mm -hmm, sorry. Let I let remember me, doing the installation of President Sali, I mean, President We Are. You know that he invited most of the African players and some of them came Paul posted to look at it as an investor investment opportunity, JJ Okocha, he was there. And I asked him the same question. But up to now, I don't know if there have been any follow up on that. Yeah, yeah, a missed opportunity. 
And I have a caller on the line that I want to bring in, but I just want to um, kind of piggyback on what uh, Mr. Amara said about diversifying. Because uh, anytime we think about investment in Liberia or making money, we think about natural resources. But the talent, the people, they are even more resources than what you think we can find under the soil. So that is very, very important. We can, uh, we, 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 I don't know whether there's a joke or not. They say when a boy is born in Brazil, they celebrate because that's million already. Because Brazil export soccer players, okay? So if we start to have that kind of mindset and start to invest in people and not just diamond, go or rubber or talking about, because every time we talk, you know, the country having resources, we are talking about mineral resources. Let me bring a caller on the line. Caller, your name and where you calling from? We have a caller on the line. Hello, I'm sorry. Hello, you hear me now? Okay, yes, I can hear you. Your name and where you calling from? Hi, uh, my name is Rose Joy Carmore. Um, I'm, I'm going to introduce myself in a professional way. Welcome, Rose. Um, so my name is Rose. How you doing? My name is Rose Joy. I I am I am the the founder and um, president of the Foundation of Innovative Change. Welcome. And I'm I am I'm also a, yeah I'm I'm also a big advocate of the emergency sector like this. So I I I don't have a question, but I want to talk to my librarian people for maybe two seconds or. Or, or, or two minutes. Um, it's it's funny that we have a a very unique country, and we have everything we need in that country to make us, you know, live a good life. Um, we still have the stadium where we have been there since I was a little girl, and with all the the money boys that walk in the country and all the professional soccer players. Nobody have better that stadium, um, and and it don't have to even deal with you going to school, you know, common sense, and people thinking that this place can make money in order to help the poor people out in my country. So it is it is sad, it is so sad. And secondly, we have a lot of people in Liberia. They are so talented. You know, why do we run to other countries and become and use our talent there when we are in our own country and we cannot do nothing there, but all we want to do is hang out or let the old man sell market for our children to go to school and that's it. You know, I'm going to pick it back off from Mr. Jones. Um, there's other sports that people come from, from Liberia and come to another country and see things. You know, I think people people get better in life when they come and get exposed to things and go back to their own country and try to do the same thing there. But it seems like our Liberian people, we don't do a lot of thinking, mm. you know, a lot of terror thinking. All we do is come, see, enjoy, go, sit there. And 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 they have, this is that we become a thing that we do every time. So now we are so, as Liberians, we are tired of it. So we need we need to start thinking. I want to give a message to my Liberian people, whoever listening. I want to say that you guys need to start thinking. The people that have went to school, have PhD, have masters. We need to start thinking better, because because of our thinking process, our country is where it's at today. So again, thank you to the platform. Thank you to Mr. Dennis and all you guys on there tonight, and I hope. We moving back, moving forward, we get a better life bearer, and we all will be able to go back home and live a good life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rose, and thank you for being a, a faithful caller and a follower of Focus on Liberia. We appreciate your time. And, you know, we, we value our viewers because, you know, the discussion or the kinds of discussion we have is now what currently is attracting the people. You know, people are so drawn to entertainment, to politics, to drama, 
or sometimes it's not even politics just sometimes it's only noise but uh, when you are discussing something like this not many people are interested not because it's not interested but that's where that's not where the country is right now so let, let me come back to uh, to you and uh, we're going to be concluding in in a minute but let me start with you uh, mr amara on your, your your final thoughts on this on this subject and we hope to uh, have you back another time mr amara yes. your final thoughts on this subject yeah thank you very much i will almost always be around um i think uh, first of all i need to thank my sister who just called i think uh, all we need to do as africans let's try to have a rethink over what we want to do i think the most sensitive thing in africa for now is politics it is politics because people think that that is the best way to get money but when a common man think that the environment where we are living is a very big opportunity where you and i can survive perfectly as long as we make perfect use of the uh, with the environment that we have i think the politicians need to have a rethink we don't need uh, we don't need wealthy people. We don't need other people from other countries to come and develop West Africa or Africa where we are now staying. We need our African brothers, but let us have a rethink. Let us invest into the young talent that we have. It is not only Liberia, Syria, which other country that I have undertaken. We have a lot of other countries who went through revolution today. Their their economies is fantastically booming. So we also have the same thing. The most important thing is that let us build the human capital. I think what is lacking in, in West Africa, Sierra Leone and Liberia are not exception. Is the human capital is definitely not there. There are a lot of things that we have around. We have a very good uh, capital or whatsoever the economy is here. We have the natural resources, we have the resources around us, but as soon as the human capital is not there. So investment is not being, there's nothing being invested into the human capital. So let's try to see as we are still, we are all young, let's try to create a kind of feeling to young people that yourself, myself, and the collaboration of with other things within our environment will be able to Ginger urban environment and create a very fantastic area for development. But as long as there is no uh, investment into human capital, I wonder where we are going. So the best way our government can do is to start investing into the human capital and let them let them watch that all area of development. It shouldn't just be limited to politics. But as long as the young one or those of us who are very young at this particular stage, uh, we are taking politics to be the most sensitive area. So I think we need to encourage other people into different type of workforce life so that they can come and make perfect investment. The government should also create a type of policy that may attract others, like private investors who may come to invest into sport, substantive farming. You talk about uh, entrepreneurship. Just create the platform. The policy should be friendly. Let the policy be distant friendly. And let us forget about the Buzila, what's the thing about politics. I think it's, it has been a very fantastic conversation. I'm happy to join you guys. I hope to join you next time. Good night. Th thank you. And. Uh... Our Dr. Gompu has just joined us. Dr. Gompu, we are closing now. So I want you to give both your introductory statement and your closing statement. <laughs> introductory and closing. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I just want to thank you and the panelists, uh, uh, Mr. Jones and Mr. Zhu and the other uh, our other colleague who came in from Sierra Leone. Uh, I think this is a, an important topic. I've been trying to call in and then, uh, you know, I don't know, something was wrong with the line or so. But um, I think we cannot follow the traditional model anymore. Uh, not every one of our of the people in our population will follow, you know, the traditional career path of being lawyers, doctors, teachers, or engineers. Clearly, uh, we have people who are talented in other areas, and uh, they should be given an opportunity to pursue the areas of their dream. So we have to make an effort to open up new industries, new sector. And I think uh, the sporting sector or sports as uh, a sector 
provides some viable opportunities for some of our young people. And uh, I listened to some of the analysis earlier, and uh, Mr. Zhu was stressing the issue of accountability, and that accountability issue is linked to transparency again and rule of law. So most of the time, people tend to think that when something is for government, uh, and if government the one making the investment, uh, they feel that, uh, well, I can embezzle government funds and uh, nothing happens because historically this is what has happened. And even as we speak now, uh, we are not really showing a serious interest in enforcing our law. So, uh, so the, the law enforcement issue and rule of law issue is important there. But beyond that, uh, I think there is a need for us to be creative in developing some new models that will help us to expand some of these industries. So maybe we need to look at a private part, uh, private public partnership model where government can own a share of the companies or of the initiative to develop some of these sports or to develop some of these sectors. And as they develop, then government can gradually sell its share and get out. But the entrepreneurial spirit needs to be supported and it needs to be uh, encouraged. Uh, that some of the talents are there and some of the entrepreneurs are there with an interest, but then they do not have sometimes a significant amount of uh, initial capital to start. So, and government cannot do everything because there are just so many different areas uh, uh, where government uh, is needed. So a private part, uh, a private uh, public partnership, and some of the private can be, some of it can be foreign too, and the foreign does not necessarily have to be European or American. It can be Liberians in diaspora, it can be uh, other Africans in other countries, but those models need to be developed. The resources need to be generated so that these, uh, some of these sectors can start. So I think uh, that's one place to look at and let the entrepreneurial spirit develop some of these things rather than uh, hoping and waiting for government to carry the entire load. And we know that the government itself is very reluctant to enforce its laws because some people say we are all related and therefore they cannot be hard on, the, on on relatives and friends. Dr. Gong, and cool. yeah, yeah, you are saying you are saying we should have this entrepreneurial spirit. But uh, from what I'm hearing you to say is, uh, these are they are bottlenecks, and they. However, in order to do them, we also have to again go back to the issue of accountability, transparency, and rule of law, because even if you have the good intention. When you are reluctant and weak in enforcing your own law, nobody will listen to you. So even you know you say you come in and you develop in a private par uh, private public partnership, government puts in maybe five million to start something, and let's say, let's do a test case in uh, Grand Jeter County or in in Cape Mount County. Then the the the, the partners decide, okay, well we're just going to take the government share, put it in our pocket, and and, and, and disappear. So what happens? When it comes down to prosecuting these people, then the officials say, well, you know, we are all related, and therefore we really can't put anybody in jail. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, you can't do it now in Nimba, you can't do it now in Moscow, you can't do it anywhere else, but that precedence has been set that, you know, government resources can be plundered, can be looted, and that will happen. That has been the history. So we've got to find ways to also get beyond that. I'm not saying uh, we cannot do it. It can yeah. be done, but well, it requires that? the will and it requires the commitment. Well, additionally, yeah. addis huh? go ahead. No, no, I say, what is that way? You say we've got to find way. I, I want you to, I want you to. I said the will. We have to find the will. The will. The will. W -I -L -L. What, if, the will. What, if, what if we don't find it? What do we do? Well, we have to find it in order for us to make it because in other places, for all of its citizens, it's not just for the party that wins. 
is not just for uh, the those who are in power. Those who are in power are basically put there to manage and to preside over the nation's resources. What other developing nations have done, South Korea and other places, one of the things that they have done very well in order to transform is that when they got uh, committed to consistent effort to encourage their scientists, their well-educated people, and their intellectuals to return home to help in the development process. They have not been proud about it. They have not been shy about it. But when we look at Liberia, we see the citizens and so many of our people being very selfish. And they have this view that when the best is not available, the available becomes the best. The best they create all available. kinds of barriers. They create all kinds of barriers for people, for our scientists around the world, our intellectuals around the world, our, uh, our successful business people around the world to return home. They make it very, very difficult. They come up with all kinds of uh, 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 backward ideas to even say that, oh, when those people come home, in fact, they're not citizens anymore. Or in fact, if they're going to be citizens, in fact, they're going to be second class citizens, all kinds of nonsense. So yeah. our people, civil societies have to step up and say, look, the selfishness has left us nowhere. Liberia is for us all. We need to invite our people home. The friend, the, our colleague who just came on talked about human capital. You cannot mm-hmm. just dream about it. You cannot create it overnight. Those people who were invested in already exist. If we start investing now in the case right now, they're not going to be productive until 15, 1600, I mean, or 20 years from now. Mm-hmm. So we need to take advantage of those human capital that we already have, our scientists around the world, our, mm-hmm. our engineers. And I know so many of them, electrical engineers, engineers, mining engineers, political scientists, all these people should be encouraged to return home as the Ghanaians have done, as other people have done. Thank but the fear, the fear of the intellectual class, the fear of those who are ready to say, okay, let's make it difficult for them to come so that we can be the only guys on the scene right. because of the, the backward Liberian uh, idea that, you know, when they're available, I mean, when the best is not available, the available become the best. So we got to get beyond that. So those are my closing comments. And I'd like to thank the, the panelists. I am, uh, you know, uh, I apologize for, for my uh, delay in coming into the meeting. Uh, I think the numbers I had was somehow not uh, workable. Thank you. So thank thank you, you so much. Thank you. Let me go to you, Mr. Zuo. You are close. Thank you very much. I think uh, uh, based on what Dr. Gompu said and Amara, I just want to conclude that, uh, as I said, the banking system, they need to get involved. The same way you got a mobile company getting involved with sports development, uh, private sector involvement. One best suggestion which Dr. Gompu has said is to do public-private partnership. Maybe some of these uh, commercial banks or companies can now say, you know, why we have this 40% share into this other football team and let's go with it. And individuals, including the Ford Dolo, Robert Salif, those who got private football team are also doing their best to invest in, in youth development in Liberia. But one important side of this thing I want to also bring in last day as a concluding point is that you know, media and publicity has so much to do with sports development and attraction from around the world. And we now need to do that. The media in Liberia need to know how to market themselves and market the sporting opportunity. If they can be doing video on most of the, the, the games being played and, 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 and sell it out, you will see that team manager will be, you know, interested to buy such a video and also watch the team and see what are the skill and talent that are there. You know, some of the sports analysts will be able to, to identify good players from those videos. And we had the last time when uh, Winger, as a Winger visited libraries, what I expected of us to have done, to put a young team together and play, let him just carry the video and watch it, he'll be able to identify the talented players among them. So, these are some of the things we need to do. We need to blend the sporting, the marketing, and the economic side of it to see how best we can make ourselves more productive and attractive as a company and as a country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alex? Uh, thank you again, Dennis, for the show. And thank you.
and Mr. Edward uh, Amar is also a sports writer. In fact, one of the finest sports writers that I've seen in Africa of late. I read some of his articles and I got took an interest in him. Of course. Alex, your audio again. Oh my gosh. All right. So, Mr. Kamar, you can hear me better? Yeah, and, and, and can we, we can switch to uh, we can switch to the uh, panelist view. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Sports, uh, Mr. Amar is a great sports writer, and um, it's so cool to that. Only eight people on it. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, what I was saying is uh, that uh, Mr. Zuo made a lot of good points about how we can get in. So, uh, so uh, that the it was that the home but the issue here you need management the people who manage teams in europe are not mostly players the people who manage uh the nba teams the coaches the uh staffing office the cfos they are not uh players the problem i have with Liberians is that we don't have enough money proven manager that will go and take any industry and say, all right, let me focus on this industry, whether it's golf, sports, cocoa, coffee, whatever. Everybody wants to be a politician. And that is ludicrous. Everybody cannot go to public office. And all we see today is everybody on a dream is, all right, I want to run for office or senator. That's fine. But there's a lot of opportunities there. You have banking sectors. You don't have good bankers. So Mr. Zuo was saying the bank should go out and invest in sport. But how many other banks, the nine banks, eight of them are owned by foreign foreigners. They're not going to come and put millions of dollars in Liberia soccer. You have LBDI. LBDI does not have the capital. They're running on a deficit. So the problem is us. We who have the ability to look outside of politics, and say, all right, let's look for means to generate economic development. We have to take on our role, unfortunately. Uh, and I think it's an opportunity for us, uh, again, to talk, discuss it, to look at it, and leave the polit politics to the people, the politicians. And I tell people all the time, I have no interest in politics. If I, I dislike it, you know, I am my butt blow voice when I hear politics because. Of every country in the world, I haven't seen anything politicians have done that has really developed nations. Even in this great America, look at the dialogue, the, the, the great luck we have in politics. And this is one of the most advanced democracies. The only reason America is where it is because of business and economics in the private sector. Not because those people sitting in Washington arguing can't agree on a loaf of bread. So Liberians sports. This is a great opportunity, and I will close with this final message. I hope somehow our leaders, uh, president, whoever gets this message, you need to look for people who are not interested in politics, but rather economics and business development. And those are the people who can build this infrastructure, uh, whether it's sports management, sports uh, manufacturing, uh, uh, sports education, and things like that. Because the politicians, they only there for one reason. They want a steady paycheck to the next thing. Yeah. Thank you again. I appreciate all the comments and uh, all the guys who joined the show. Uh, the discussion was, I really enjoyed it tonight more than any other show, to be honest. Right. So you, you, it, it looked like you are complaining about the, the politicians, but they have done a good job to market, you know, and uh, maybe we can conclude with this because uh, I think Dr. Gompu expressed the same thing that. Uh, when he looked at the numbers watching the show, he made a comment. But if there's a political show, you have over 400 people watching it. So it, it seems to me that the politicians have done a good job, that their area is more attractive than everything else. Or is it that we are the one who are creating them? What is, what is, what is the story of Liberia? Uh, uh, Amara, I think it's the same. You know, in West Africa, when they say politics, people go there. <laughs> we are discussing yeah. economic and there's no much interest. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That tells you that they have made politics. Our politicians are so cunning to understand that they have made politics so attractive and forget about investing into other things. And don't blame the locals or the commoners because uh, you think, because the manner in which the, the politicians have handled politics in South Africa, it has become a cheap game where a lot of people might lose and for the gain of few. 
So each time you set eyes on, on politicians, yeah, you feel attracted to them. And the unfortunate thing about it is that we hate corruption, but we love the corrupt. And the <laughs> other thing, honestly, we hate corruption, but we love the corrupt. So if you love somebody who, who actually perpetrate the crime, then you hate the crime. Then it's just like saying you don't eat monkey, but you love the soup. And exactly what is happening. And I think uh, most of the time, when people are very attracted to politics, it's because we think and feel that politics is the cheap way or the cheapest way for us to get money. I think it is high time we started coming out robustly, tell people that politics, in fact, when you talk about politics, it's a very limited game. But if you are in the world of entrepreneurship, the world of trying to trace talent and expose, to expose them, the, the sky becomes your limit. You hear you are going to be free, you are going to be liberal, you think, you create, you implement, and you try to invest into certain things. So I think the best way that we can do is to, because some people are actually educated, but they are not informed. And if you are educated yet you are not informed, it means you are also deformed. That is why exactly you see, when they come out, they try to tell you things that are not actually part and parcel of politics. So I think the best way that we can do is to try to, to establish peculiar examples that people may see that living into politics is trying to expose your life into danger because politicians today, they are not almost always free. An investor is somebody who is free, who has that personal will and who is willing to invest. So the best way that we can do, let us try to, to because I think they have just created, they have made politics to be something catchy, so attractive down the world that we are try, actually trying to live in. So the best way we can do, let us just watch at the environment, try to create a type of opportunity tap this talent, expose them, and to create a type of platform that young people might start to see that without, uh, with or without politics, they can definitely survive. We have a lot of talents in Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea, where you, you check it out. But it is because politicians have actually managed to, 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 to demoralize this other aspect and just make politics very central focus. No wonder, even in Sierra Leone, when our uh, campaign was going in 2017 to 2018, if you hear about politics, a lot of other people will be around, but immediately they say this entrepreneur have come, somebody have come with this type of initiative. They'll only find few young men who may feel attracted to those things. Mm -hmm. It is because people are living under less than a dollar per day. And when this politician comes around, they use you, they use you, they, they use, they can use you to manage your affairs and just ask you with a chicken change, you can go and mismanage whatsoever things that are coming around. At the end of the day, they are now being denounced. It is only now because certain circumstances, because of the exposure when it comes to internet and other activities, people have not had to, to, to know that with or without politics, they can survive. Just a hundred thousand lives, that could, could be equivalent to uh, what, uh, ten dollars into, into, into America, where ten dollars into, into America over there. People are now investing. So we have these uh, microfinance institutions, they are giving people financial uh, education to tell them that try to invest into say, invest into the little talent that they have. So now we are trying, we are now we are seeing that politics now becoming something that is a little bit not on, it is not more as attractive as it used to be, but people have now started to live into the other way. I think the best way we can do, as I say initially, let us try to sensitize people, let us conscientize them, let us tell them what it what it takes a man. Because when you use your head, your body will definitely not suffer. That, uh, that's, a, that's a true statement. And we will end on that note because I don't think any statement can beat that statement. You love, you hate corruption, but you love the corrupt. You hate more. Yeah, I, I, hello. You love the soup. Hello. Hello. Hello, uh, Dr. Bumbu. Yes. Uh, I just want to uh, follow up. Uh, I heard a statement that uh, I think I disagree with. And I'd like to uh, make some clarification. Uh, I think that whole. Uh, Alex's uh, statement of denigrating politicians, I don't think that is the way to go. You're not going to be a successful entrepreneur anywhere if your starting very point is to denigrate the, the politicians. We're all politics. They, all, no, no, no. Let me, let me one I, think you, I think you made your statement. <laughs> let, let me let me yeah, follow but up. you're talking me, so I have to respond. <laughs> yeah, wait, but well, after, I, I, after, I, after I'm done, then you can respond. Dr. Okay, Bubu, we're ending, we're ending, we are ending the, the show. So we're we're ending, like... but then we can't, we can't end on a negative note. We need to end on a positive note. But yeah. I think is respond, that, uh, attack. there is. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, the thing is that uh, politics. Yeah, you can, just, you can just take that statement in 30 seconds so that we can 
Ellis can respond. Of the politics need not be denigrated. It is through the political process that we get our leader. Without leadership, there is no country. Uh, during the 13 years of civil war, there was no politics. Who wanted that? There was no politics. Nobody was in charge. Well, we have well, anarchy, and we know what we what we got. So politics is not need not be denigrated. It's the way in which we do politics that can make it a good thing for our society or make it destructive for our society. And if our political system is not working, we the citizens have to use the same kind of ingenuity that it takes to create industry to go in and, and, and fix it. So we cannot have a prosperous, stable society without politics and without uh, politicians and leaders. It's through the political process that we get our leaders. So if you don't understand it and you think that politics is such a bad thing and, and whatever, by the same time you want to be an entrepreneur that would develop the society, it's impossible. You cannot enter any country okay. without you, dealing you. with government because the government provides all of the government control, government has a monopoly over even the entry into the country. You cannot come to America without the, the politicians. You cannot come here without a passport. You cannot come here without a visa. So, I mean, no, this whole uh, no idea uh, of, 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 of okay. denigrating politics, I think, is, 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 is counterproductive. Th thank you. Uh, okay, may thank I respond, you. please? Yeah. Tell now, us I want to respond in one minute because we want to require one minute. Number one, I'm not saying that people shouldn't have democracy, people shouldn't discuss their political views. I'm saying that in Liberia is being destructive. In Liberia is, 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 is caused the war. It's caused a lot of, and there are many countries in the world, including China, that do not forecast politics. And they want, China is today the second largest economy in the world. So don't misconstrue me that I'm saying that I personally hate it because it has not done us much favor. In Africa, you have all these democracy. You have, it's, it's all uh, 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 carried on in corruption, in corrupt practices. So democracy is fine, but I'm saying there's a lot of political shows. This show is about economics. This show is about business. We okay. want to talk about business. We want to create entrepreneurs. We're not here to, you know, do what Henry Costa or any other political show is doing. Our goal here is simply, we're looking for entrepreneurs. But if, if that is your goal, then you will not denigrate politics. It, you don't have to denigrate it. You don't have to, you don't have to attack the political process. Okay, but, but if the you political process to. is not working for us, then we need to look at other ways. If it's ways not where working, it does not mean that you it. know it does not mean that it needs to be destructive all of the time. It's not a bad, you know. It, it's but it not, has been it destructive. Really it has been okay. destructive. I, I it has been corrupt. I think we're going to have. Who one. can fix it? Who can fix it? Uh, if the citizens who have that, to fix it, it cannot do without. And it doesn't think, have to be through a political Mr. process. Mr. Gumpo, maybe we can make that in next show. Oh, 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 yeah, we can make that in the next show. Because we I have love it, Dr. G. And that's what this show is all about. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. I want to thank you all for your participation. What are we looking at uh, for the next business and economic forum? Food economics, agriculture. All right. Next Dr. Wednesday, Bobo, right? so, as we now join us for the economics of food. We're going to be talking about Is it about Wednesday it. or Saturday? I thought we were moving to the Saturday. So, well, when then we have to get we'll back with the audience. We have to get back. And then on, yeah. on Sunday, and then on Sunday, we're going, to, uh, we're going to have our series, we'll continue our series on African collaboration and unity. So join us this Sunday for African collaboration. We're going to be speaking to the leader of the uh, African, the founder and leader of the African Sons and Daughters. We're going to have that uh, on Sunday. And then the economic forum is going to continue either Wednesday or Saturday, but let's keep it we're going to be, wherever time it comes to you, we're going to be discussing the economics of the two. Until then, I want to say thank you so much for joining. I want to thank our, our viewers on Facebook and uh, also on YouTube. Uh, Amaran, thank you so much for joining all the way from Freetown. Uh, Mr. Uh, Zuo, you, 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 were, you were only uh, watching the two go at it now, but we'll come back and we're <laughs> going to discuss. This is a very important topic because there's a lot of complaints about politics and um, economics. So we're going to delve into that a little more. 
Until next time, I want to say once again, thank you so much for joining us. Good night and God bless you.